everyone. Welcome to the Breakaway Podcast. I'm your host, John Root. We have a fantastic conversation right here. I think this is such an inflection point in women's sports. And luckily, we have courageous people that are speaking out against trans women in sports. It's ruining women's sports. And the only way we really make a difference is by having people that are actually in these sports, in women's swimming right now, speaking out against Leah Thomas. Before I bring in our special guests, I do want you to check out our special episode we had about the MLB Hall of Fame. I go off on all these steroid users. Brian's got a little different take on Barry Bonds, but that is on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Also, you can check that out on YouTube. But without further ado, bringing in U.S. National Team swimmer Gabby DeLoof, and we also have Team USA swimmer Erica Brown. Welcome to the Breakaway Podcast. Thanks for Thank having you. Us. Well, first off, uh, I want to start with you, Erica, because obviously you were the very first active U.S. National Team swimmer to speak out against Leah Thomas. A lot of people have heard about the Leah Thomas debate. I don't really think this should be a debate whatsoever. I think this is only something that's going to hurt and continue to hurt women's sports. So when you first saw this come into the scene, you know, what kind of empowered you to speak up? Because you were the very first and it takes quite a bit to take that first leap. Yeah. So I first heard about this through, um, just like online Instagram and I was shocked. Um, Mm. I didn't even know that there were already rules in place for transgenders in sport. I've just never experienced that. And, um, I just read about it, I researched and kind of just took a couple of days and it was really just eating me up and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And um, just the fact that nobody had said anything was really bothering me. So um, I know that in order to enact change and, and get the rules changed, people need to speak up. So that's what kind of inspired me. And I think so often now, too, people are so afraid to get canceled or they're so afraid to get ostracized from their teammates, from their community, university, whatever it may be. I know we have those conversations all the time on this podcast and even with students across college campuses around the country. And I know we've even had Ennis Cantor Freedom. He's made quite the stance that really goes against what the NBA really thinks about China. But you're someone that... You know, you're a 21-time All-American. You won 18 SEC titles. You have won medals in the Olympics. So you're someone that is nationally recognized, just like you, Gabby, that, you know, you are known in your sport. And you know that taking a stance like this was not going to be savory for a lot of people. So when you came out and basically said that I no longer want to be silent and I want to share something that's on my heart. Have you gotten a good response from other people? And do you feel like this is a spark that could really light a fire and make a difference? Yeah, I personally got a lot of great feedback. I mean, there are a few negative people. Um, of course, that's always going to happen, but majority of 99% of people were very positive and agreed, but um, it's sad because so many of those people were athletes, even national team athletes, um, my Olympic teammates, but because like you said, they don't want to get canceled. So um, I don't know, you know, how comfortable people will be speaking up. But for me, like I, I am not afraid to, because I'm really strong in my faith and mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of what people think of me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. So that's kind of, you know, what, what allowed me to break through those fears and go ahead and put a statement out. And I think why it's so important to, I want to bring you in here, Gabby, is you seem to echo the sent- sentiments from from Erica. So you had a little response yourself and it seemed like both of you did this in the sense of people just decide what you want to do. Like if you want to be known as a man or a woman, whatever, whatever it may be, but this is hurting our sport right now. And it seems like also Erica inspired you to speak out as well. Is that correct? Yeah, she did. I had contemplated coming out for a while. I was talking to my parents and some of my friends and teammates about it. And I was like, this is something that I really want to do, but I really need to be careful and how I say it, but I shouldn't even have to worry about other people. Like Erica said, like, everyone's going to have their own opinions regardless if it's what I think or what they believe in. So Erica definitely um, inspired me to speak out and I'm so glad that I did. And I would do it a hundred times over because we need to save women's sports. This is so important. Exactly. And I feel like this is something that if you stay silent, it's only going to get 
get worse. And I feel like too often in our culture, people feel like they are so scared to, you know, stand by your faith. Like you talked about Erica, it's like, Hey, this is what I believe. And this is the best way you probably know how to love people is by telling them the truth. And it seems like the world right now is telling people, no, it's, it's my truth. I want to be known as this. And I think you don't have personal grudges against Leah Thomas, but there's this precedent that's been set. And it seems like the NCAA is not stepping up like they should, because there's a difference that you can make, but it goes to the higher powers and saying like, hey, you need to make sure that you protect our sports. Because right now I always ask like, where are the feminists at? And, and I don't understand if you're so up in arms about, you know, this lack of equality with women's sports, when you have a legitimate biological male that is dominating this sport, someone that spent three seasons on the University of Pennsylvania's swim team and is now transitioning over to the women's team. Can you protect us? Can you do something about it? Have you been calling for the NCAA to, to make a difference? And have you gotten a response from them at all? Gabby, I'll start with you. I have not. Um, I actually was just had a Zoom call with Nancy. I believe her last name is Hogshead. She's a civil rights lawyer, Title IX activist, like all that stuff. And we're trying to get more people involved. And I can tell you there were 200 people on that Zoom call. 200. Wow. And but no one's speaking out because everyone is so scared of getting canceled because of this woke culture that we live in. And I know, I mean, I'm not an Olympian. My sister is and Erica is, but it's like, are you scared of losing sponsorships? Do you believe in women's sports? Like, are we going to go back on title nine? That was just everything. Title nine happened in 1984, Mm -hmm. (laughs) 1984. And we are now in 2022. That wasn't that long ago. So it's just like making, we're going backwards, but to your point, no, I have not reached out to the NCAA. Um, I'm planning on writing a letter to USA Swimming with their stance. Um, they came forward last week, I believe, and mm-hmm. didn't really, there's nothing much to say. Yeah, because it seems like right now everything's like very arbitrary. And what they're saying right now is there's going to be a board of governors. They're going to decide a new transgender policy that's going to be a sport by sport approach. And I know even Dr. Emma Hilton, she's a developmental biologist from the University of Manchester, it's basically just saying you have a national board that doesn't have a policy, and then you got an international board that doesn't have a policy, and then that gets thrown to the international board that has no policy, and then it's sent to the IOC that has a no testosterone suppression requirement. So it seems like they're acting like they're doing something, but nothing's actually being done because there's no policy set in place. What do you think, Erica? What you were saying is completely correct. Um, The the governing bodies of swimming just keep pushing it to each other and nothing is really getting done. And um, something you mentioned is the testosterone levels that the IOC has put in place, certain um, like hormone levels that you have to be under. But what I think is really important people aren't talking about is once a male goes through puberty, he has the lung capacity of a male, the muscle size, the body size. Those are all biological advantages that just taking hormone suppressants don't change. Um, So I think those are things that those governing bodies need to be talking about. Um, Just just setting a limit on hormone levels is not going to help women's sports. Well, that's got to be insulting too, because they're dumbing women down to estrogen and they're dumbing men down to testosterone. They're saying that is the definition of a male or a female. And it totally takes out these advantages that males have with just their body type, biology, bone structure, like you talked about, lung capacity, all these aspects of science. Science is being thrown out the window in more ways than one. Gabby, I know you've been very vocal about the other aspect of science and Mr. Science (laughs) right now telling you how to live your life. But specifically for this instance here, we have to get back to the real science, the real biology, and know that this is about fairness and an equal playing field. And if we're going to allow biological men in these sports, it's pretty much the end of women's sports as we see it. Yeah. I mean, I agree. It's It's interesting because there isn't enough research for the transgender society and culture that we live in, but now we're just throwing transgender women into women's sports. And we, 
it's no longer men and women. It's women plus transgender females. Mm -hmm. And I mean, going back to the science, biologically, Title IX, the Title IX rules, I think, need to be changed to what you were born biologically. Right now, I believe Title IX says that we will not discriminate based on sex and gender. But in order to protect women, we now need to change the Title IX rule to say based on what you were born as biologically. And I know it's going to be tough for the transgender community to hear that, but it just, I don't know. It kind of just boils my blood every time we talk about it. Or yeah, I see it, something. And it's just, it's really infuriating because now it's women don't matter. Women's mental health doesn't mm -hmm. matter. We are now, like you said before, we, it is, you have to agree with transgender females or this side of society. And if you have a voice, they're basically saying, screw you. You don't know what's right. But Erica and I and many other athletes are living in this sport. And I'm like, we are doing this to protect the future and our rights as women to compete. Exactly. And that's what it comes down to is if you're going to be silent right now and not stand up for your other teammates that have worked so hard. You both have worked so hard in your sports. You are just absolutely have a storied history. Like both of you, I know, Gabby, we haven't talked about some of your history too. You have all, all three of your sisters, Allie, Katie, and Jackie swam at the University of Michigan. You swam at the University of Michigan. You're five-time Big Ten champion. Erica, you talked about what you've done in the Olympics as well. You've worked very hard to get to where you're at. And to think now that you can have some biological male that just decides one day flip of the switch. You know what? I feel like a woman and I'm going to do that transition. And all this is dumbed down to is by taking a few pills that could bump down my testosterone levels that are okay for some governing body. I can now take away everything that you've worked decades for. Erica, what's your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, it's very frustrating, but not just for us. I think of myself as a young girl and looking up to college athletes to Olympic athletes and seeing them do so well and wanting to be like them. I can't imagine being that little girl and seeing a transgender take someone's place in the NCAA in the Olympics, who knows where this could go. Um, that can be really defeating. So I think a big reason of why we're, we want to speak up is for those young girls and for other women. Cause I mean, we've made it to a pretty high level and we've done a lot of great things in the sport, but what really matters is the entire group of women swimming. And then, Gabby, I want to continue to get your take on Title IX. Title IX is brought up quite a bit these days, and I think there can be some legalities that could actually help universities right here dealing with this situation when it says, hey, this is actually not protecting women's sports or women in general, and that could maybe be escalated to the Supreme Court and a real decision can be made. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm all for the bill being passed. Um, if it does, I think there's actually something in the works right now based off of the Zoom call that I had, but it's more about getting the word out there, emailing, calling our senators, and it's gonna be really hard for this bill to be passed in the Supreme Court under the presidency that we have now. Mm -hmm. But if it's seen as a bipartisan bill, because I know there are people on both sides, not to turn anything political, but on both sides that agree with this, but no one wants to speak out. So it's gonna, again, it's gonna have to come down to the Supreme Court rulings. I don't think, I truly don't believe the NCAA and um, USA Swimming should really have a stance on this. I think this is something that is bigger than ourselves. And then so. Erica, do you think this will actually come down to biologically, if you're a male, you play in male sports. If you're biologically a female, you will play in female sports. Like, do you think that is actually going to happen? Because I, see, I think might as well just start a transgender league if you feel like that's what you want to do. What do you think? I, I think starting a transgender league is a great way to mitigate this issue. But I mean, and that's my hope. But as of right now, everything's based on opinion. And the fact is, if you're born a biological male, you can identify as a woman, but that doesn't make you a biological woman. 
and and you don't have the right to compete with biological women and that might hurt your feelings but that's the way the world works and so if we continue to make rules based off of feelings i, I mean it might not pass but it is my hope that we stick to the facts and change the rules and that's what, so I know you were talking about, Gabby, this whole woke culture that we're in and everyone's just like against the the hierarchy and everything that's really suppressed women for so long and like stand up for women's rights. And that's exactly what you're doing. But they miss this here when it says this is going to cost scholarships. This is going to cost Olympic appearances. This is already costing. I know there's a lot of high school athletes, some high school athletes in Connecticut are saying like, this is wrong. It's putting these girls and women in a tough spot where they have to really speak up because this is not just about 2022. This is not just about the women's swimming national championships that are coming up. This is about the future of, of women's sports. So when it comes to that, can you think, how do you continue to explain and ingrain in people that this is not just about Leah Thomas. This is about all of us. And this might even be about you that might be sentimental, to the LGBTQ and transgender community. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's really interesting. You say that I, I train, I still train at the university of Michigan and I had brief conversations with some of the women on the swim team. And I said, what are you guys going to do come NCAAs in March? I was like, this doesn't directly affect me right now because I'm out of the NCAA and I no longer compete collegiately. But again, this will turn into a future issue that I want to protect for myself, for other females, for other people's daughters that can't speak up or don't know how to, or even for my daughters in the future. But again, yeah, it isn't directly a Leah Thomas situation. I just think because Leah Thomas has gotten so much publicity that it's become a Leah Thomas situation, but it shouldn't be. And I even got ostracized in my post. I said nothing about Leah Thomas and everyone commented or harassed me, whatever you want to call it on Instagram and said, I can't believe you're saying this stuff about Leah Thomas. What about her mental health? And I just sit back and I'm like, what about mine? Yep. As a female, what about biological women? This is not, again, I keep saying this isn't a Leah Thomas situation, but I just repeat myself. I'm so repetitive at the pool when I'm talking to my friends and I'm open to have a conversation with people to see both sides, but I'm pretty firm on my opinion and what I believe in. But again, like I'm open to the conversations, but I'm sticking to what I believe in. And that's just what I tell people. And I think that's obviously it, for you two, it's not a Leah Thomas situation, but a lot of people on the woke side of the conversation and people that just want to be all about like tolerance and acceptance are completely disregarding biological women here once again. And they're making it about Leah Thomas. Like this is like some superstar that is going to make so much progress, but they are just really losing the fact here that, you know, even Leah Thomas coming out and saying like, this is completely fair. And it's easy for someone like Leah Thomas to say that when they're absolutely dominating these races. And Erica, my question for you would be when we have the national championships for women's swimming coming up this year in March, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think there needs to be some other swimmers that boycott which is a very tough decision. Obviously, we've had that conversation about the Olympics here, about what athletes should do about boycotting because they care about human rights. Here, do you feel like coaches and athletes should boycott or should we expect some sort of decision to be made by the NCAA before the national championships? Uh, well, based on what the NCAA has released, it doesn't look like they're going to change anything. Um, so... The coaches and the team should boycott, but knowing how it feels to swim at NCAAs and you're scoring points for your team, you have that responsibility to take care of your team. So no matter what, you have to get in and do the work. So I think, you know, based on what's happened so far, I think people are going to need to stand up and say something. But if I was in that position, I would still be competing because you're competing for your team. Um, and it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of voices to stand up and, and speak out about what's right. But it's hard because, like Gabby said, you can come out with a statement that's very kind, very straight to the point and 
factually based and people that don't agree will take it and twist it into something that it isn't. And, and that's what will get, you know, broadcasted out. So it's very hard. I understand why people are struggling to say something. Well, and that's why I'm so glad that we're having this conversation here because so many people, they can read just a little statement from you two and you poured your hearts into those statements. There was a lot of love, a lot of grace and trying to find some sort of way forward here to not only protect your own careers, but the career of women now and for the future of your sport. Because it's not just about college athletics. This is about professional athletics as well. And it's not just about swimming. It's all across the board. But like you said, Erica, there's people that need to speak out. And did you hear when the Rice swim coach, Seth Hudson, spoke out? I know he's been there for about 19 years, was a four-time Conference USA Coach of the Year basically saying it's a black and white situation right now. You compete is what you're biologically born as. It's, it's as simple as that. What do you think about that response? If you, if you heard that, we'll start with you, uh, Gabby. I heard it. My sister sent it to me. I read the article and I was like, it's about time that a swim coach came out and said something. And I had a talk with a former coach of mine and everyone is scared to lose their jobs Mm-hmm. and being canceled. And it's not fair. It is not fair that we should be silenced to our opinions and everyone else can have theirs if they agree with whatever else is going on. Um, I hope more coaches uh, stand up. And I mean, it's even, I don't know. I think it's funny that I come in every day to the pool and I'm like, what do these coaches think? Mm-hmm. We have men and we have women. Like, I know they all know what's going on, but I'm just like, do you really believe in women's sport or do you not? And the funny part about this whole situation is he didn't get canceled. Like they didn't fire him. There wasn't some backlash from Rice that said, we don't stand with our coach at all. And hopefully that's something that just empowers more people to think, well, maybe people do agree with me. Maybe I'm not just the silent majority in in this situation that this is something I could talk about and my career can be protected and I could still hold on to my friends or my scholarship or whatever it may be, or sponsors, whatever it may be. Right. Yeah, I agree. I hope more people come forward. It, it needs to be done. It needs to be said. And I, I'm grateful Erica was the first one to come out and I know not many people have come out since then, but there's been a outpouring of support from a lot of people and I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for the rest of you to come out and say something. <laughs> what's what's it going to take to get people to speak out? Because I know we have so many of these conversations, especially just this woke world that we live in right now. There's there's so many people that fill my DMs too. And I know I come from a big sports media background and I was afraid to like tweets on Twitter because I didn't want to get that to get on my feed and people to know that I was conservative or what I really thought about transgender sports or whatever it may be. And, but there's people that fill my DMs are like, thank you for saying this, or thank you for bringing up this topic. It's like, well, why don't you do that? Uh, But I don't think it's a safe place for everybody, but at least you two are calling out like, Hey, teammates, we talk about this in our group chats, or we chat about this in person. Can you at least have some courage to stand with me here? Because they have to know you're standing up for them as well. What do you think, Erica? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And it's really frustrating. But um, I think the world we live in today, everyone's so worried about what other people think of them. And you go on social media and and people can just comment such hateful things. So you have to be really strong in who you are and not care what people say about you. Um, I think that's the key piece to being able to step up and say something just deciding that you don't care what other people think and you know who you are. And as long as it's done in love and um, you're staying true to who you are, then I think, I think that's really important. Who do you think would need to step up and say something that could really make a massive difference? Would it need to be a big swimmer like Katie Ledecky to say something in order to really put more pressure on the governing bodies here to, protect and preserve women's sports. Gabby, what do you think? I think so. I mean, you have Katie, you have all the Olympians. I don't want to call anyone out, but mm-hmm. yeah, you have everyone that made the Tokyo Olympic team that could say something. I know past Olympians and Olympians from this year liked my post and messaged me. 
And again, again, I think they're worried of potentially losing sponsorships, but I think that's why they have agents and lawyers involved for that. But again, I think it's not even just in the swimming world, the big names. I think there could be track stars that come out because there's now a transgender athlete in women's track. Like it could be anyone from any sport. Um, someone, some, uh, I don't know what the car racing thing is like, uh, BMX like, or something like that. Oh yeah. Like motor, motocross stuff. or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of those guys commented on my post and was like, thanks for standing up and saying something like at this point, I think if anyone has a name in the sport, if you're male or female, come out and say it. And then someone, when you think of swimming, you think of Michael Phelps. And I know Michael Phelps was asked about this on CNN. He was with Christiane Amapour. And he said, you know, he brought up like from a standpoint, like of doping, like I haven't made things super fair. And he tried to, I think, bounce around the conversation and even said, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know what's going to happen. I believe that we should all feel comfortable with who we are in our own skin, but I think sports should all be played on an even playing field. So it sounds like Michael Phelps, and I know obviously you aren't on this podcast that calls specific people out, but you are calling to encourage people to speak up. And I think if anybody was really going to make a a massive difference, probably Michael Phelps, because that is just a household name uh, around here. And if he's just going to dance around the situation, you you need support. And it's not just women standing up for women. This is why I'd love this conversation because I will speak about this till I'm blue in the face because women's sports needs to be protected. And we need to have people like Michael Phelps actually take a stance on this and not just bounce, bounce around, basically. What do you think, Erica? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we need big names in swimming and we need a lot of numbers. Like Gabby said, everyone's talking about it behind closed doors, but then, you know, on social media, they don't want to talk about it. It's funny because whatever is trending or woke, whatever looks good, you know, all the virtue signaling that Mm -hmm. has happened, they'll post about that. But then something that they might get negative feedback about, they don't want to post. Um, and like I said, it's hard because those negative people are the loudest, but we need more numbers and we definitely need, um, high profile athletes to stand up and say something. And then I feel like I'm always pretty blunt about this to say, if LeBron James wanted to become a woman tomorrow, he would score 10,000 points a game in the WNBA. And that's not to say that the skill set of these women isn't incredible, that they aren't unbelievable athletes, but there's an advantage. And there's a reason why this is women-y, or this is ruined women's sports compared to the flip side of things. There isn't going to be a WNBA player that says, I am now a man that's going to jump into the NBA. And I feel like that's a part of the conversation that that isn't brought up at all and get people to really realize here, like this is once again about protecting the integrity of the sport. Be who you want to be, but know that if we want this to be fair, we have to understand that analogy of there's a reason why men are flocking to women's sports and finding a lot of success and not the other way around. What do you think, Gabby? I mean, I agree 100%. Um, There have been people who are like, well, what about transgender males? I said, yeah, it's a conversation, but it's, I don't know if it's one to be had because there's no different, like there's no similarity to what is going on with transgender female in sport. Like you could have transgender male and it could be an open category and they're still going to work hard and swim fast or run fast or whatever they do in their sport, but it's never going to be the same as a biological male competing against Erica and I or any other women and having full blown advantage over us biologically. And I was talking to my friends about it and I was like, okay, let's make it fair. You want to have transgender female in sport, then let me take drugs. Let me do testosterone. But once I take drugs and do testosterone and I test positive, I'm out for two years. So what's the difference truly with people that are being transgender female, going on hormones, suppressants, whatever, what is the difference? If you want to make it equal and have transgender females in women's sport, which 
I mean, I don't think it should be, but let me take drugs and let's see what happens. And then Erica too, I'm sure you from like the Christian standpoint, like once again, Gabby, that's so spot on. Like it's obviously they're moving the goalposts for people and acting like they're tolerant. But Erica, you from a Christian standpoint, you talk about this idea of truth and love and this is the best way you know how to love and care for people like Leah Thomas by giving them the truth. Because I think this is not only just hurting women's sports, this is hurting people like Leah Thomas to be cheered on and say, you can be whoever you want to be. Totally disregard biology, totally disregard the way God made us. This is about caring for Leah Thomas. And I feel like that part of the conversation is just not brought up at all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's really popular now to have my truth and there is no my also, truth. Also, real quick, There's that just... is so triggering for me. Anytime I hear somebody say my truth, I am just, I, I lose it. I, I hate that phrase. There's the truth. That's it. There's yes. not my truth. That's it. <laughs> There's on. only the truth. I feel the same way. And so it's so frustrating when I see that and I hear that, you know, there's only the truth. And I think the reason we're having such issues with this topic is people don't want to look at the truth. They only want to look at, oh, well, you know, they, she doesn't want to get her feelings hurt or this is her truth. We're really proud of her, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the facts and she cannot compete as a biological woman. And it's, it's just fact. We need to focus on fact and not feelings. Tell me this. I want to get an answer from both of you. We're going to start with you, Gabby. If you had a sit down conversation with Leah Thomas, what would you say? Honestly, that's a very tough question <laughs> to answer right now. But if I were to sit down with Leah Thomas and have a conversation with her, one, I'd probably say, I'm proud of you for being a transgender female and wanting to compete in your sport. But why? Like, do you know what you're doing to biological females? Do you understand what kind of, I mean, pressure to even that she's putting on her, her teammates. If Leah was one of my teammates, I think I'd walk off the pool deck. I don't think I'd compete anymore, honestly. But even going back to what Erica was saying, like, it's so tough because when you compete at NCAAs, you are swimming for a team and something bigger than yourself. And with COVID happening, everyone wants to compete. But just in my head, like, what is, like, what, how do you think this is fair? How do you think this is right? Um, how do you feel swimming next to your female teammates that are biological women and you beat them every single day? Like, or you finish a race, like what goes through your head when you beat them by 30 seconds? And I know Ledecky does that too, but Ledecky is, I think, on a different spectrum, but it's just... In my head, I just have a, like, why? Just truly why? What, like, do you feel okay going to bed at night competing against biological women? Like, does it make you happy to put these females under these types of pressure? And I don't know, just, I guess just why, really. <laughs> Erica, what would you say to, to Leah Thomas if you had a sit down conversation yourself? I would ask her something similar, but just basically, how do you go from being 550 second as a male in the 200 free to first as a woman without biological advantage? And do you feel guilt about that? I mean, ultimately she is following the rules, but based on her statements, it seems like she doesn't feel, you know, any guilt about it. She feels like she's doing the right thing. So um, I would like to ask her, you know, how do you go from, being in such a low position to the best in the nation without advantage. And then I know too, it's just like everyone can hear both of your hearts behind this whole situation. This isn't just some sort of attack on, on one person. I think a lot of people like to dumb that down, where it's just like all Gabby and Erica want to do is just try to halt progress. And cause we're really moving forward in a great place in the world. A lot of people really believe that. But once again, it's not about this one person. And then also knowing I asked that question because that conversation that if you, if you had that one-on-one -on -one conversation with Leah Thomas, that's not what would make the difference. The NCAA needs to make the difference. The international Olympic committee, people in power need to make the difference. You can have great little conversations and we can complain about this stuff. We can put out great statements, but you guys want to 
enact change. So my question would be, Gabby, what's the next step here? And what are you planning on doing to ensure that women's sports are protected? You know, I think the next step is being involved in trying to get this as many people to speak out about it or even call senators and email, do whatever. I think this, I mean, I believe this issue will be taken to the Supreme Court. I think people still need to speak out. And I know social media misconstrues everything or everyone takes it and twists it in some way. And some people like to hide behind a screen and are worried about what people think. But I think people need to truly stand up and continue to speak and my future plans for this are to be in touch with Nancy because I know she has a lot of people, um, a part of this transgender female issue. And I also think I was talking to Erica. I'm still planning on writing my letter to USA Swimming and getting a lot of women behind um, protecting females in sport. And then what do you think the next step is, Erica? What are you planning on doing yourself and then working with people like Gabby to make sure that you can protect women's sports and make a difference here? Yeah, I think just encouraging my teammates to speak out and not be afraid. And um, any athlete that you know I have those conversations with, just encouraging them. And also writing letters, phone calls, um, emails. It's really important. Um, and just having those conversations with those governing bodies um, just to get the conversation started. They can only put it off for so long. Like something has to change if we're all speaking up. And I think there's so many people out there that aren't courageous like you two, and they're just waiting for someone else to, to make the difference. But I think there's this aspect, just like you brought up earlier, Gabby, it's, it's a team that swimming is, is a team sport. You're only as strong as your weakest link. And to know that there's strength in numbers here. If you get people to speak up and start, all, all you want to do is just have a sit down conversation and just realize, hey, this is why we feel wronged. This is why this is not helping this specific sport or women in general. Gabby, how do you specifically encourage people though? You want people to speak up but not everybody has a religious background where they really subscribe to a certain line of thinking about how God made them or, or something like that. How do you encourage people to, to really step up and know this is more important than just yourself? You're probably going to lose friends. You might have some awkward time with your family. This could hurt you with sponsorships, but at least you're doing this for maybe your future children or future, swimming, uh, future NCAA swimmers and Olympians. Yeah, I think just the repetitive wordage of like, this isn't just about you and how you feel. And you know what, if you have friends, or even family members that don't agree with you, then you know what, you don't need them in your life anyway, they shouldn't be your friends if they can't respect what you believe in, um, or feel. And I think just having these conversations, especially with women, I know the majority of the males that I talk to are in full support of this, but they're kind of like, well, what do, what can we do? Because we're not, we're not a part of the conversation and it, it doesn't have anything to do with us. I'm glad you but bring again, that up, but I, I don't mean to cut you off, but that was going to be another one of my questions here is like, so often we are just ostracizing one gender and also just plain and simple. There are two genders, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's it. There's, there's men and women. And you realize you need men to help out here. This isn't just a women's issue. And I feel like that's why I will always speak about it because sports have been a huge part of my life. It will always be a huge part of, of my life, but men need to say something uh, about this because their voices can make a huge difference partnering with you too. Right. I agree 100%. In my mind, I would see it as, okay, I think the men should boycott NCAAs. That might make a difference. I don't know. Every woman is not going to, I think women are so vulnerable and scared anyway, and their confidence is already so low at the college level that they don't, like, they don't really know who they are, what they want to believe in. And, you know, that's hard as it is, but then to come out and say something that only 1% right now of women are saying um it's like how do you go about that but i think again just going back to your question is just having the open conversation about it not being scared to talk about it and telling these people hey i'm not going to force you to come out on social media 
but just have a conversation about it with your family, with your friends, keep bringing it up. And you know what, when it, if the bill comes around, you can call anonymously. No one's going to know if you called. I'm not going to ask you, Hey, did you do this? Hey, when are you coming out on social media? I just want you to protect yourself as a female, as a woman in this society, protect future swimmers, future athletes, and your future daughters. That's really what it is. So you know what? Call who you want to call. I'm not going to force you to come out on social media, but try and do something and make a difference because this is something that's bigger than just us. Amen to that. And I think that's where you need everybody to come together. And I don't say something like this, like men need to save it. It's, it's no, that's, don't put words in my mouth. I know there's a lot of people who try to put words in your guys' mouth and misconstrue what you say. Like that's definitely anybody listening or watching. That's, that's not what I'm saying that, that men need to come up and, and save the day. No chance. What you two are doing is already unbelievably courageous and keeping conversation going. Um, Erica, what, what I'd ask you is, Obviously, with the national championships um, coming up, what do you think happens if Leah Thomas dominates just every single race um, that they're in? Do you think that well, will? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I think that's very possible. And and if that does ho- happen, hopefully it's a big pivoting point for the sport and other sports as well. I mean, that will be a a great example of why it doesn't make sense for biological men to compete against biological women. I would hate to see that happen. I would feel for those women. I can't imagine being in that position and having to race a biological male. It would be so upsetting, especially when you're scoring points for your team. It means so much more when you're doing something for your team. So I can see it happening, unfortunately, but I think it could be a big turning point for the sport. And I, I think, hope. yeah, I hope so too. And I think it's going to be so interesting to see what happens here. And like you say, like, unfortunately, like I have absolutely no optimism that the NCAA is going to make some sort of move that's going to protect the other women swimmers. So hopefully they just take uh, a courageous stand and, you know, whether they boycott, maybe have like the old university of Pennsylvania men's team swimmers do something themselves, like make some sort of stand because if you just keep letting this go, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Just like I think a lot of aspects of our society, and we talk about censorship quite a bit. I think we allowed a lot of big tech companies to really take a lot of liberties and then it got so bad, but we could have made a difference earlier. And I think that's what's going to happen here with transgenders in, in sports. And then Gabby, what I would ask you is anytime people look to women's sports, it seems like the superstar that at least the the, the woke side of the aisle and ESPN wants to prop up to stand up for women's sports is Megan Rapino, And Megan Rapino has had quite a bit to say about lack of equality when it comes to the U.S. men's national soccer team compared to their team. And it seems like if she really cares about women's sports, her voice could make a huge difference here. Do you think she would speak out? And if she just refuses to speak out, what do you think that really says about her and her pretending to really care uh, about women and athletics? Well, I, it's an interesting question. And I think it also goes back to like, where are the feminists at Yep. <laughs> from the beginning? Um, and I think if people truly cared about women in sport with, WNBA and women's soccer, there's are we already have such a big gap between men and female in sport. And if you are so vocal about coming out about pay and XYZ and everything else that's going on, why in your governing body, why can't you also have respect for yourself as a female? Um, I also think it's it might be tough because I do have a lot of gay friends or gay people that I know. And I know a lot of them believe in what I'm saying, but I think they're also, because we live in this woke society, they're scared of coming out in their community as this is something that I don't believe in. And I don't know if, I don't, I truly don't know what people are going to do. I, I would really hope that people come out. But again, I think if no one comes out, it shows, it kind of shows where you, where you lie on this opinion and this argument. 
And then I think another way forward to here, Erica, is to have mainstream news outlets cover this. Obviously, a show like this, we are happy to call out all this nonsense that we feel like is is ruining sports. I feel like there's an aspect of everybody can have their own opinion. I think there's aspects of social justice that's really hurt sports, NBA for sure. There's people that left in the millions, their NBA finals ratings just tanked over the last few years. The NFL, a lot of people left and got rid of their NFL game pass. And people are just sick of a lot of this nonsense that's that's hurting sports and it's an over-politicization of sports. And it's a lack of fairness in sports. But we're not hearing about that from places like ESPN. They're, they're not covering this at all. I have not heard one bit of this conversation from someone like Stephen A. Smith any place on Sports Center whatsoever, because it seems like if these mainstream news outlets talked about it, a change could be made as well. Yeah. Um, are you surprised, though? No, no, not <laughs> I think at all. It's, I think it's very controlled, and I, I, yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, it, it's very – the woke media is not going to go against what what is popular, what is sounds good. They're just not. And that's why I think it's so important that we stand up and we say something. I mean, Fox News, they put out some great stuff speaking Mm -hmm. out about it. Um, But yeah, I I mean, I haven't heard anything really on those um, media or news channels. And I don't really expect to because it's not common. Yeah. And that's what's so sad in the society right now, too. There's so much absolute nonsense that's in our world that is just really ruining sports and we're just looking for a conversation about it and that's what is so interesting about this show and the conversations i have all the time it's like it it shouldn't be that shocking to have conversations like this but a lot of people are silenced and we've gotten just so deep down this rabbit hole like places like espn they have gone woke for over a decade and it's been a long, long time that they've dug this hole. So I'm, I'm not surprised at all that they don't cover these things. But maybe that's a reason why we're in this place right now is because they want you to silence and they want everybody that's maybe on the... This isn't even like a right... This shouldn't be a right or left issue. And I feel like that's another thing in sports that everything's been over-politicized where it's like, if you don't like Leah Thomas, you must be some right-wing crazy... And that's not what it's about at all. This is about this is about true science. This is about how God made us. And this is about how we actually truly care for people. So as we wrap things up, I want to get your final thoughts and maybe get your outlook on what you think is going to be happening with women's sports throughout the rest of this year. And if you really feel some sort of optimism that some difference can be made. Let's start with you, Gabby. I hope that, I mean, I think like Erica said, I think especially in swimming come March NCAAs, it's going to be a huge turning point because the NCAA is not going to change anything between now and then. And I think that's when everyone's going to kind of start seeing, okay, well, yeah, maybe, maybe these people were right. And we should start speaking up and saying something. Um, I have right now, I have very little optimism just because of the way that conversations are going and the way people have their opinions and what they're saying. I don't know if you saw anything about my post. I had to go private. Um, It was terrible. And I mean, 85% of it was positive, but when it's bad, it's bad. And that's why no one wants to say anything. So that's why my optimism right now was a little low, but I think Come March, April, May, come when every like track starting up again, swimming is going to go into long course, like sports are going to become more active. And I think as we move towards the spring and summer, I think more people are going to come out. Um, and I hope that people will say something. And then finally, Erica, what advice would you give young girls right now? Because I'm sure there's, and there definitely is, there's young girls in situations right now. They might be young swimmers and this whole culture is allowing people to transition into whatever gender they want. What advice would you give them? And then it's specifically to parents and people in positions of power that can actually really make a difference because it shouldn't just be up to you two. It shouldn't be young girls that are 
uh, coming up in swimming that need to take some sort of courageous stance. We're, we're looking for leaders and people in positions of influence to make a difference. What advice would you give young girls and people in positions of power? Yeah, well, to young girls, I would just want to tell them to keep up what they're doing and, and know this is wrong and that we are going to be fighting for them and we don't want to allow this to happen. So don't let this you know, destroy everything you're doing. Don't quit. Just keep going. And um, to the people in power, it's time to stand up and say something and make a difference. Um, we cannot allow this to happen. It's absolutely ridiculous. It is based purely in fact, mm -hmm. and we need to just acknowledge that and move forward with changing the rules. Yeah. And we'll, as we wrap this up too, I want people to know where they can follow you and continue to keep up with your careers and keep up with your courageous stances. Gabby, where can people follow you and learn a little bit more about what you're doing to protect women's sports? You can follow me on Instagram. I haven't decided to go back to being public, but <laughs> we'll see I if will. you make it on the private account and see if you get accepted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I would love to go public, you know, and I think, you know what, I will, you know what, at this point, screw what people think of me. I'm comp like Erica said, I'm very confident in myself and my opinion, and no one's going to silence me or shut me up. I will keep preaching about this until I am blue in the face until something happens because women fought for us and the opportunity to have title nine exist for us to even compete in a collegiate sport and have the opportunity to have a scholarship. I'm going to do this for everyone else in the future. So follow me on Instagram at Gita loop. I'm really not active on Twitter. So <laughs> Instagram is the best, best place for me. Go off Gabby. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, where can people follow you and uh, keep up with your career and everything you're doing to protect women's sports and specifically swimming here? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, Erica Jade Brown, and I'm also not that active on Twitter. Um, maybe I will be in the future. <laughs> I think I'm like Erica Brown 27 or something. You can probably look it up, but definitely going to be posting more and, and doing everything we can to help this initiative. Well, thank you so much for your courage, too. I know this is so inspirational to me and all our viewers and everybody that follows Turning Point, follows Breakaway, because this is a battle worth fighting. And I think a lot of people need to understand your story and where you're coming from. And that's why I'm glad we have conversations like this. This is 100% a battle worth fighting. And you two are on the front lines. You're taking a lot of hits. It's been wildly uncomfortable, but something we talk about all the time it's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. So thank you so much for your courageous stance and explaining a little bit more what you're doing to protect swimming and women's sports in general. Thank you too. Thank you.